I want, I want to provide value for you. You know, you're, you, you like to do mostly commercial, you said, right? We do both. Um, you do both, but I mean, that's, you like the commercial, I know, as you my said. territory is more commercial. Mm -hmm. And guys, you know, how many, how many residential jobs does it, take to, to, does it take to hit a million in revenue? I mean, you know, 20, 50 jobs. I mean, but how many homeowners do you have to deal with? How many different adjusters do you have to deal with, right? I mean, how many different job sites, material, you know, and on and on and on. And so commercial is where I'd love to see all of you go into to gravitate towards. The roofing on the commercial side is just extremely lucrative. I mean, it's just insane. There's a lot of profit built into that, right? But here's what guys don't know. And this is the day I, I'm telling you about the day that I learned this. And I asked the adjuster, what are you gonna pay for to go back with, right? And I'm gonna ask you guys. That's what I was about waiting for that. Well, I'm gonna ask you guys, what would you pay, well, what do they owe to go back with? It depends on the policy. Some of them is functional, and some are just replacement costs, so depending on the policy, really. <clears throat> Like, if I'm removing five layers, what do they have to pay for going back? They're not going to pay for five layers. Well, they don't want to, at least. And why? What would be their reasoning? Let's play this out. You're not going to put five layers? Tell me, huh? You're not going to put five layers back. Oh, got it. Got it. And why aren't you going to put five layers back? Play that out. It's not feasible. It's against the law. Yeah, it's against the law. The, 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 there's another code that says you can only go with one roofing system, right? Unless it's like spray foam going over something. But even if you did that, it can't be water saturated, right? And so, hmm, that makes sense. So if you're only going back with one layer, then they only owe what's actually incurred, right? <clears throat> you're, my, you're my guy that loves, this is, this is stuff you dig into, right? That doesn't bring them back to free law. Right. right. My man. And nobody ever, you know, picks up on that. But I, I figured you might because of your your analytical brain. inspections. I'll just use this time while I'm suited up here. Uh, when I'm doing my inspections, it made me think that camera right there is what I use um, without all the little gadgets on it, right? But I want you to think about something like the adjusters, they show up with their little little flat Kodak, you know, little cameras, the little digital cameras, and but they have all their little gadgets and, and um, how, how do you got, I'm curious how SurfPro, how do you show up for your inspections? What, do you, what kind of tools and gadgets do you bring I with you? Let's see what it is. Um, there's a water job, or if you want to just go fire that the, you know, got sprayed down to, um, FLIRs, mm -hmm. so that we can track water. What's a, what's a FLIR? Tell the guys what a FLIR. Um, all this laser tape just because it makes it like so much easier. Uh -huh. Listen to what he's saying, guys. These are, this is Serve Pro. We don't ever have a Serve Pro guy in the room. <laughs> we'll take advantage of you. I got basically a water kit. Um, anything that you're going to use to track water, uh, check humidity levels, check content um, uh, water levels. But the FLIR is really, the infrared is worth the price because now you can get them for. Which one do you use? I'll be using the big one. Um, <laughs> So you know what he's talking about, right? So like when you go around and you find these water spots, or you don't find a water spot, 
you know, you could use thermal imaging and, you know, infrared cameras and, and, and uh, handheld infrared devices, okay, just to dumb it down for you, to, science to, it. to, to literally see the water, the moisture in the wall or in the roof, like on a flat roof, commercial roof, you can see it. You know, I know guys that, that customize their drones and hook up thermal imaging cameras to them and have to go like right at dawn. Have you ever dealt with any of that? Dawn. Yeah, oh yeah. Roof thermal imaging? Totally. Yes. Yeah, totally. You have to go like at before sunset, right, like yeah, at four yeah, in the morning, you know? Yeah. yeah. And besides, for us, at least on the emergency side, the thermal uh, and the infrared reduces the risk of lawsuits. You can't go possibly go through with a photo of a penetrating meter and walk a room, around, walk a room and do 4,000 intervals to figure out where it's wet, especially if it's a roof leak, a flat roof leak, because it'll run verticals. But you might get a corner over there with pockets of insulation that you're never going to see that water got in, may or may not be related. But six months from now, if you're there to dry it, and they got mold in that corner, that's your fault now. Mm -hmm. One way or the other, they let me, let, let, me, let me go somewhere out of place here. I want, I want to provide value for you, you know. You're, you, you like to do mostly commercial, you said, right? We do both. Um, you do both, but I mean, that's, you like different. the commercial, I know, as you My said. My territory is more commercial. Mm -hmm. And guys, you know, how many, how many residential jobs does it, take to, to, does it take to hit a million in revenue? I mean, you know, 20, 50 jobs. I mean, but how many homeowners do you have to deal with? How many different adjusters do you have to deal with, right? I mean, how many different job sites, material, you know, and on and on and on. And so commercial is where I'd love to see all of you go into to gravitate towards, right? Even you, bud. You and your, you know, you, you're, what you're doing, right? Um, what about, are you doing anything like uh, pre-loss with folks? So like going in and providing total thermal imaging scans, complete total detailed inspections, before anything happens, roof, right, everything, document the building before anything happens. That way, I mean, it's just like if you have homeowner, homeowner's insurance, you have content, you should make a videotape with all of your stuff. It's the same concept, right? If you're looking for a way to get commercial clients, what about that and offer routine inspections to the roof system and the AC units as a part of that to keep up with it. That way, if a loss ever occurs, are you doing things like that? We, Tell me what you're doing. We do. Crap, I didn't provide value. I'm gonna have to go, I'm gonna have to do, one up. We do it. I'm gonna get them though, trust me. I've got some stuff for them. We don't touch anything with the roof or stuff like that. But if it's a commercial building, we'll go in and identify water shutoffs, sprinkler system shutoffs, electrical shutoffs, where the server room is. So we'll go for a walk through all of that and it's talking into an app. Um, even where to park vehicles, sure. it's designed mostly to take away the first three or four hours of a commercial job where you're trying to get a base sign up though. So you, we, do do, we don't do anything structural though. We're not that kind of thing. We don't do groups. We don't do, we take images, we do images, we don't do thermal imaging and stuff like that. Is that your own animal? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. The roofing on the commercial side is just extremely lucrative. I mean, it's just insane. Because usually it's a flat roof, you know, I'm talking about like flat roof systems. You get in there, the code requires you to go all the way down to the deck. In the places you're talking about, they inspect the deck, right? So you definitely have to go, meaning you can't leave the old felt in place on any roof. You know, you gotta go all the way down to the deck. A lot, of, a lot of folks, I have to say that because a lot of folks I know, roofers, will leave the old felt in place and they'll be like, oh, Chad, it gives you more R value. It's more moisture barrier. Yeah, but it's against the law. Yeah. Um, so, for example, when you're doing roofing, um, I know building code says you have to replace the woodware. Um, it's like rotted. I mean, it's not solid. But what happens if there's moisture on there, but it's not rotted? You know, would insurance be able to pick that up? Correct. Like if you go up into the attic, you saw there's some wet spots, but it's not. One thousand percent, because <clears throat> solid nailable sheathing <clears throat> is what you're talking about, right? That could mean a lot of things. That could be rot. That could be wet. 
That could be wafering, warped. It could be too many nail holes because the roof's been replaced too many times or it's just old. It could be a lot of things, but that's just one building code. That's the one that everybody talks about when, that, that knows a little bit about this in the Facebook groups. But water saturated underlayment, that's another building code. So nothing can be, this is why it's so lucrative in the, in the commercial side with roofing. Nothing can be water saturated. The, the fell, the, see with, with commercial roofing, you usually have almost, all, I mean, unless it's a brand new building, you're finding multiple layers of roofing that was there before. So you might be looking at modified bitumen as your top layer or spray foam or something like that. If you look under there, you've got another layer of mod bit build up, tar and gravel, right? Who knows? And then you finally get all the way down. There could be four or five layers. Actually, usually there is. I mean, because I'm, I'm, I'm doing mostly commercial stuff these days, and usually it's, it's four or five layers, right? So a couple things to note, they have to pay you to remove each and every single layer that's there, okay? In addition to parapet wall flashing, remove and replace, must be removed and replaced, you've got flashing around every, you know, the AC units detach reset. I mean, at least the curb, you have to deal with it, and curb flashing. Uh, you've got the uh, parapet wall cap flashing that has to be dealt with. I mean, it's, it's extremely lucrative, but then, just one second, they have to pay you to remove all of it. So, typically, they'll adjust to remove and replace whatever they see on the top, like mod bit, 100 squares of mod bit, or a modified bitman, right? But the, the next thing you want to do, because that's applied coverage, like they've opened the door, the very next thing you want to do is go in and cut a 10 by 10. Like they have core cutting tools, like these little round pipe looking things that you can cut a hole out. But I would actually cut a 10 by 10 with a knife area, like a box out all the way down to the deck. And then you can see and document, take photos of each and every layer, you know, Take pictures of the whole thing, you know, bunch of pictures. Now they have to, on your estimate then, you're putting remove mod bit, remove tar and gravel, remove spray foam, whatever is there, right? Now I was in this place in, called Nevada, Missouri one time. I'm gonna provide some value, I know. Um, it, middle of nowhere, small little town. And like literally it was like, <laughs> nobody knew about it, but there was like baseball size hail all in this town. And my client called me in there he had like 50 claims that he called me in to deal with. I get there, he's got 150, turn it into 150. So I'm stuck in this little small town. I had to drive an hour from my hotel to get kind of to the area every day. I was staying in this little Hampton Inn. And um, I, I'm downtown Nevada one day meeting with a State Farm commercial guy. I don't usually deal with State Farm commercial, uh, but he was a State Farm commercial guy. And downtown, old, old buildings, flat roof, where they're all kind of uh, attached to each other. So the parapet walls like separating each of these buildings. We're standing there. They'd already applied coverage. We did a core test. This is a second reinspect guy came out, like the second adjuster. He came out, I had the core test done and I'm standing in the core, like uh, on the deck. And it's like up to my knee. It was so deep full of all these different layers. And so I'm like, all right, well, how do you want to deal with this? And this is how you do it. So, He's like, well, the way I see it, we have to pay to remove all the layers that are there, and we have to pay for the, you know, he was sharp, we have to pay for the ISO board, which means, you know, you've got to bring the R values up to the, up to the building code. And so, like, the, the energy values, you know, the R values of the roof cavity, the whole roof cavity has to reach a certain level. Like, in this area, for commercial, that would be an R30. So you have to re bring it all the way up to an R30. Residential's R38, if you get a flat roof on, which I've had plenty of flat roofs on residential too, uh, R38. So you have to add a couple of sheets of ISO board in addition to mod bit or whatever you're gonna go back with, TPO, Duralast, or whatever you're gonna use, right? But here's the thing, that's all known. Like commercial roofers, they know all this. That, that, that's lucrative, that upgrade, the ISO board and all that. Uh, there's, there's a lot of profit built into that, right? But here's what guys don't know. And this is the day I, I'm telling you about the day that I learned this. And I asked the adjuster, well, what about the, the, the layers? What are you going to pay for to go back with? Right? And I'm going to ask you guys. That's what I was, I was waiting for that. 
Well, I'm going to ask you guys, what would you pay? Well, what do they owe to go back with? Depends on the policy. Some of them is functional, and some are just replacement costs. So, depending on the policy, really. Like, if I'm removing five layers, what do they have to pay for going back? Well, they're not going to pay for five layers, or they don't want to at least. And why? What would be their reasoning? Let's play this out. You're not going to put five layers? Tell me, huh? You're not going to put five layers back. Oh, got it, got it. And why aren't you going to put five layers back? Play that out. It's not feasible. To it's against the law. It, yeah, it's against the law. The, 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 there's another code that says you can only go with one roofing system, right? Unless it's like spray foam going over something. But even if you did that, it can't be water saturated, right? And so, hmm, that makes sense. So if you're only going back with one layer, then they only owe what's actually incurred, right? No. You're, my, you're my guy that loves, this is, this is stuff you dig into, right? Well, the, that doesn't bring them back to pre-law. Right. right, my man. And nobody ever you know, picks up on that, but I, I figured you might because of your, I, I, your analytical I brain. A, you know, it's a good argument, but it's, it, I don't know, it's a, it's a tough argument because. But, so, so you know, if you, but if you brought them back, Here's the, here's, the, here's the answer. And the adjuster is the one that gave it to me. He said, well, the way I see it is we owe for what's actually there, right? But you're not gonna go back with all those layers. So we owe the client the ACV value of all of those layers. There's your $50,000 commercial deductible, Mr. Jones. How do I do that as a contractor though? Because now I'm out of bounds. You could do it. You could, you could do it. You know what I mean? But how do I do it? How does a contractor do that? Well, write in my opening statement in the estimate. If I build it in that way, I would put in there all the building materials in this estimate are there for the purposes or for the purpose of the client, the policyholder rather, determining their ACV value upon request from the client. I can't lie to an insurance company though. So if that's not true, I can't say that, like upon request from the client. So first, I need to educate the client, you know what I mean? And ask them how they want me to do it. Mr. Jones, do you want me to put it in there or don't you? So would that apply the same logic to? Tile and carpet, a yes, yes. With 18 layers? I knew you, you know, because I know you see that more, more than the roof layers, so. I'm here for the roof, I'm not here for the roof, but that was the yes. I don't even understand half the terms you said. Sure, but sure. I get the layers of the. Yeah, so for you, you see it a lot, don't you? Like the carpet that goes over the vinyl, or the carpet that goes over the tile, or the carpet that goes over the hardwood. The answer is absolutely. Because I'm thinking, <clears throat> I'm thinking up, and, up until now, what you would do is you would pick, pick the most expensive one, right? So if, no? Or what you yeah, go so back so with? So we, we would, on the remove, we would get the layers. Mm -hmm. okay, unless mm -hmm. I mean, there's a line item for our end up or leave it. Like, sure. But we would hit the letters. Where we've been successful on the reconstruction side, getting the letters put back, got him, is him. when um, we didn't tear cabinets up, but uh -huh. we had to get the floor back up to a level in the kitchen. So we would have to go back with multiple layers. Otherwise, he's paying to tear out the cabinets to get everything level. Yeah. But other than that, we usually. But those layers are technically not the layers that you took out. You're putting plywood or glue on or something right. to bring it so up. That's what so, but they don't owe the contractor. That's right. the thing. That's right. the difference here. They don't owe the contractor. They owe the client. And so I would use this because, you know, you, you're trying to find ways of coming up with a deductible in residential claims and commercial it's even more. <laughs> you know, we've got some big deductibles. Yeah, big giant deductibles, right? 2500 to 5000 yeah, that's that's about what you know. I see. I mean, I'm down in Florida sometimes, like 15, 20. You know, it's crazy. You see that on the wind and the hurricane stuff. Yeah. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go back to this estimate here. I was looking. Yeah, go ahead, bud. So going back to uh, moisture in the wood, and moisture in the underlayments. What if, like, the insurance comes in and they want to repair the work? Mm -hmm. Have all those factors underneath. I, I love you. That's exactly how you should be thinking, right? That's how you deal with a repair. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. 
So, so I, I, I mean, I, I love that your brain went there. That shows you how sharp you are, man. You're gonna, I hate to see what you look like when you're my age in this industry. Honestly, can you imagine being sitting in a seminar like this when you're 23? Jeez, dude, I mean, that, so he's talking about when the insurance company, they don't, they don't cover a full replacement of the roof, but they're just like, ah, we, just a couple of shingles, right? And the adjuster's thinking this isn't even gonna reach the level of the deductible, right? And so, so a lot of times they won't even write it up because of that. But for me, guys, that's a big difference than the adjuster coming out and saying, the roof's not damaged by wind, right? Yeah. I mean, because if that's the case, we've got a much, we might need my buddy here for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because if we can't get them to approve, I mean, I have a lot of tactics on how to get them to approve that coverage. And by the way, you're allowed to identify damage. A lot of people say, you know, as, as a contractor, you're not allowed to even identify damage. You're not allowed to talk to the adjuster. You're not allowed to talk about price. You're allowed to do all those things. In fact, you better know how to identify damage, right? Now, so when the adjuster comes out though, and they, to me, that's an open door. They're applying coverage, right? So they, let's say they, they say two shingles, repair, you know, replace two shingles, okay? And you're like, great, you know? Well, first, let's look at that. Remember, our job is to perform all the repairs that are prescribed by the adjuster, by the claim, right? So we're gonna set, up, set out to perform that repair that they've prescribed, okay? In the process of doing that, we would remove those shingles. And of course, we're gonna to have to remove more shingles around that, we all know that. So it's not, we can't just remove those two shingles, we gotta remove the surrounding shingles. If we're on a ridge, then it's a whole different story, right? Then we might go into the, over into the other side, right? But in this area, two is not two, two is more like six or eight, right? Or it could be more, depending on the area, right? Now, knowing that about the decking, when we take it off, what's the decking look like? You see what I mean? And if that deck has to be cut out right there, the deck has to be brought up to code. The whole deck, not just part of the deck, the whole deck. So of course now we have to, rem now let me, let me stick to, with that just for one second longer. Um, um, another thing that, so what I would do in that scenario, the first thing I would do, I would set out to perform the, the you know, but I'd also do my detailed inspection, okay? So of course I'm assuming I've already tried to inspect and, pr and prove to them that there's a lot more direct physical damage, which is what that is. they've approved it based on direct, they're saying those shingles were directly hit by wind and that's what knocked them off, right? But, and, and like inhale, those shingles are the only ones we see with hail divots in them, you know what I mean? So I would first do a detailed inspection with hundreds of photos, starting with my drone in 4K, to show more spots, you know, to try to get it bought, full replacement. I'm assuming at this juncture where you're talking about, I've already gone through that, and they shut me down. They're like, nope, <laughs> you know, nope, you know, you just gotta go. But in that process, in the inspection, what I want also, man, is I want, I want to check out all the soft metals, especially in hail. Like, so let's say it's a hail damage claim. The chances are you're gonna find dings on the soft metals before you will the shingles, right? So a lot of times they'll, they'll deny it, not based on the shingles, but based on, like, so sometimes they'll say, yeah, we see hail on the soft metals, but not on the shingles, which could be, could be the case. Yeah, it could be the case because it's gonna show easier on the soft metal aluminum stuff before it will on shingles. So if it's a real small hail, sometimes that's all the damage you'll ever see is on the soft metals, but it's not big enough and wasn't, didn't fall dense enough or long enough to register on the, on the shingles, right? So even in those cases, they'll tend to not wanna write it up at all because it wouldn't reach the level of the deductible. I would say, no, 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 please, go ahead and write it up because I have to have a prescription to follow. Regardless of the deductible, I'm the contractor, I still have to make the repairs, right? So please write it up. Get, so that'll confirm the coverage, especially when, it, when it's written up and it says, you know, hey, it's this amount, but the deductible is this amount, no payment due at this time, but it is a claim, okay? So I would go care, and people say, well, why would I want to file a claim? Because that just make my premiums go up. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, it's not like auto, it's not gonna go up. You know, it's just, and when there's a hailstorm in the area, it might go up, but everybody's is going up. It's not because it just doesn't work like auto where you file a claim and your premiums go up, right? So there's literally no risk. I mean, it could be, you know, that's, I'm not a lawyer, but um, in my eyes, there's no risk for them to go ahead and file the claim. 
but in, and, so, and, and the reward is greater because in the process of going and removing those soft metals, it's the same thing. You have to remove all the shingles all around the soft metal, even more so, right, on all of them. So if there's 12 pipe jacks, you know, we have to remove shingles around all. So what we're looking for, you get it though, is just wet spots on the deck. At, at the very least, if we find water stains on the deck, we've got it, brother. We've got it. You know what I mean? I've had some inspections where the homeowners ask the adjusters to get up in the attic and look at the wood, and they say that either the decking's not covered under mm -hmm. the policy, or <laughs> if it's not damaging the ceiling, they yeah. will come for it. Uh, That's because they don't understand building codes. Because if you ask that same adjuster, the attic, we do see water spots. Yeah, see, look, if you ask that same adjuster this question instead, Mr. Adjuster, would, do you guys pay to bring everything up to code if it's required? What do you think his answer is going to be then? Depending on the policy, you know. I mean, if it's got, if it's, if OL is covered, what's his answer? I mean, 100% of the time, what's his answer? Yes, to be incurred. As incurred. <laughs> which means PWI, paid when incurred. That's, that, that means the, when they pay under that, that section of the policy, ordinance and law, building code, they don't pay it until it's done. Does that make sense? So, all right. But that, I would ask them that question instead. See, the, the answer is they don't understand building codes. Does that make sense? Sorry, right. let, let me move forward so we can fit this in, okay? All right, so if you remember, the first estimate